Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. You might have seen my Power Leap uh, Renaissance uh, motherboard on an ISA card. So what I want to do with this card is put, in, put it in a system where the old system is actually working. So we need to power the old motherboard and this motherboard. Now we could power it by splicing on some 80 connectors to the power supply of the other system. So both motherboards gets power. Or we could uh, use some ITX adapter from 12 volt to 80x here. Could also work. But I want to, this is mainly 5 volt and that's the power supply too. So I want to use 5 volts mainly for the CPU. So what I wanted to do was uh, Basically take a couple of Molex connectors from the power supply on the system this is going to. And uh, what we could do is splice them onto here. But the problem is we got, uh, got 12 volts here and 5 volts on our Molex connectors. And the 80 standard calls for plus 12, plus 5, minus 12 and minus 5 optional so that that we can ignore so we have 3 voltages we're missing the negative 12 so I have tried this uh, motherboard with only 12 volts and 5, vo 5 volts and it works but the problem is if you want to use the serial port then you need negative 12 the motherboard doesn't really complain otherwise it just reports uh, negative 12 volts at negative 63 so the simplest solution would probably probably be used to splice the 5 and the 12 volts from the Molex to 80 but uh, then we can't use the COM port and that's really no fun like I don't care too much about the COM port really but it's kind of nice to have the option and it's obviously more rewarding to try to figure out how we can generate negative 12 volts we could obviously splice just that onto the power supply in the existing system but uh, I don't want to do that, and if we're gonna do that, we might as well splice them all. So, what I would like to do instead is figure out some 12 volt to negative 12 volt uh, regulator. So, if we put this aside here, and we bring in this. Here on my breadboard, I built up a plus 12 volt to negative 12 volt uh, converter and regulator so uh, over here we got a 555 timer let's zoom in a bit here so we got this 555 timer we can use that to generate a square wave and what that does is uh, we send that into these two transistors over here, the access and amplifier, because the output current on the square wave on the pin number 3 on the 555 timer isn't particularly strong. So we amplify it here like 2 3 times, I think I estimated. So from here we get the square wave out with the high current capacity. That goes into a series of diodes here. And this works. This is a negative inverter, so it charges uh, capacitors and discharges them and can generate a negative voltage using these diodes and we're gonna go through how that works later but uh, th this is two sets, so this is both an inverter and a doubler so each stage generates about negative 10 volts so first two diodes and capacitors do that and then add the two behind it in series so we get about negative 20 out. Now we can send that to the motherboard obviously. So over here we have a transistor and we have a small center diode. And the center diode is a little bit special compared to a normal diode is that it can actually con conduct current both ways. It has a center voltage which is like a threshold voltage. So in this case it's 12 volts. So it can actually conduct in reverse if that center voltage is achieved. So by using a center here we can regulate, we can send a reference basically, negative 12 volt to the transistor and have it follow the center diode. So that way we only get negative 12 volts out. So even if we have anywhere between negative 13 to negative 20 volt in, we only get 
I take 12 volts out. Uh, like with everything, there's some losses, so there's about a voltage drop, one volt drop over the transistor, and the diodes have roughly one volt each too. So yeah, so the, the idea is to put this into like on a bread, like a small PCB, something like this, and uh, put it somewhere around here. I figure it would work. So what we can do is hook this up and uh, take some measurements and actually see that this is working. So I hooked up a multimeter here to the uh, output. So we got ground over here and we got the negative 12 over here. Then we got the power coming in up here and I hooked up the multimeter too. So you can see the positive 12 volt from the power supply and the negative coming out here. So I'm going to turn it on. So, as you can see, we've got the 11.97 volts in, and we've got the negative 11.79 out. And this is no load, obviously. So we can actually add a load. And uh, I'm gonna use some resistors here. Let's see here. These are uh, 390 ohm. So they should give about a 30 million load per uh, resistor. And the motherboard from my measurements uses about 28, so one of these will be equivalent of uh, the motherboard's uh, base current draw on the negative 12. So I hooked up uh, one resistor right now. So we're drawing about 30 milliamps, we can measure that later. But we still have around 12 volts in and we've got negative 11.63 out. That's fine. The 18 early 8 extenders is plus minus 10% if I recall, so down to minus 10.8 is fine. So this is roughly the voltage we should get on the motherboard if we hook this up to it. So we can add uh, a second transistor here to simulate uh, 60 milliamps. So I hooked up uh, two resistors here now in parallel, which means we have half the resistance and twice the load now. So we are still at around 12 volts in and we are at 10.74 so we are just shy of the minimum 80 x spec here. That's fine. Uh, so the thing is like the motherboard draws about 28 milliamps the serial ports can usually supply 1 to 4 milliamps and the most 10 so even if we use something that Managed to pull 10, 10 milli, milliamps I mean, from the serial ports. Uh, even with both of them, we should end up at the most 50 milliamps. And at 50 milliamps, we are well within specifications. So, th this is good for about 50 milliamps, which is not a lot. Uh, and uh, the 8x power supply I use to test my stuff usually is about 800 milliamps on the negative 12 and some are even less, uh, some are like 500 milliamps. So this is like a tenth or less uh, compared to like your typical power supply. But very little uses negative 12 volts these days and might even generate it on board. But this motherboard doesn't generate its own negative 12 volts for the serial ports. So if we want to use them we have to figure something out. And this solution here is kind of... I, no one would uh, use something like this on a real product because it's extremely inefficient and probably not cost effective either. But uh, this is kind of like a, an easy to understand solution, relatively speaking. Like you can find all of these bits and pieces by googling more or less and figure out how it works. So it's kind of a nice place to start. I wouldn't recommend something like this for some serious stuff, but for own, own hobby use it's kind of fun to play around with. So the idea is to try to build one of these boards and see if we can use them. But anyway, pulling about 300 milliamps from the power supply and we're getting out about uh, 60 right now. Not terribly efficient, it's, it's not. And then one of the reasons is that when you charge and discharge capacitors from my understanding is that about half the power you put in you lose in terms of heat. Then you obviously got losses in everything else, the transistors and the diodes, so 
That's why we have pretty poor efficiency. So I hooked up this multimeter to show the amp rating. So I got about 30 milliamps here with one diode. And I got negative 11.62 volts. Also I hooked up two probes. One to the output and one to the clock from the 555 timer. So you can look here on the monitor here. We can take a new print if we want. So up here we got the, the out negative voltage here. So you can see, you can check for ripple and stuff, and there's some small amounts. Uh, we have a lot of cables obviously here. Um, and down here we can see the, the pulse from the 555 timer. So here is more or less negative here, and here we got our positive. So this is our square wave, and that's what we use to drive the inverter and uh, doubler over here on the board. So yeah, let's go to the schematics and see how this works. Here we have the drawing of the circuit that we have on the breadboard. So it consists of four main parts. And the first one is this 555 timer here. And we use that to create a square wave. And how that is done is mainly through this uh, capacitor here. It's one nanofarad. And there are a couple of resistors here too for that. So it, uh, it basically determines the, the pulse uh, width. So I don't know the exact frequency, I haven't checked it, but it should be around uh, 10 to 20 kilohertz. So this circuit here puts out uh, a signal on this tree line here, which is a square wave, something like that. And that uh, goes into here and here. And what that does, and why the reason we have these two transistors here, is because um, the current that can flow from here from the 555 timer is quite limited. So we want to amplify the current so we can actually get enough amperage out of the circuit to drive something. So the way this works is when um, this square wave that comes out of here, when it's high up here, uh, voltage from 12 volt flows into these capacitors over here so it flows like so and when this goes low so it's either here like low like here the voltage here from these capacitors flows out through here like so basically as far as I can understand like my knowledge of electronics isn't that great, so this is really not much of a how-to. It's more of a hobby project, uh, how you could design something or do something instead of a fun. So that's basically what we're doing here. So we get this square wave that we got in comes out again, but now it has higher current capacity here than it had in here. So we can charge up these capacitors. Uh, properly and I actually drive some current out from here later on the negative 12 and to actually generate negative voltage uh, what how this works is when we have voltage applied in here we'll say 12 volts in here to these uh, the capacitors on the positive side the other side wants to equalize basically also go to 12 but we have a diode here and it's about a one volt drop over the diode. So once we reach that drop, it can't actually pull in any more current and therefore no voltage here. So we end up about one volt uh, here on this side, the negative side of the capacitor and we have 12 on the positive. And then what happens is when uh, this square wave goes from high to low, like I showed before, this discharges throughout here. So this side wants to go from 12 to 0. The thing is, now this one also drawn 1. That also wants to drop with 12. So 
So if we have 1 minus 12, we end up with negative 11. That's how we get our first negative voltage. And what happens then is that this side over here, this capacitor over here, and we have this diode here, current flows through it, and because we have a drop of around 1 volt there, we end up with negative 10 over here on this capacitor. So as you can see, plus it keeps it actually to ground because we're generating a, we want a negative voltage here. So this is, so the plus side actually goes to ground on the capacitor. Which is reverse what you usually do. But that works out since uh, negative 12 volt is kind of our negative reference now. And what happens here, since we have, we have these two first capacitors and diodes here, is that we have a second set over here. And this is the doubling. Basically the same thing happens again here. So we get around, uh, I think it's negative 21 here. And because we have a drop of one here on this one, we get, end up with uh, negative 20 here on, on this one here. So now we have negative up to negative, or how you look at down to negative. Uh, 20 volts, but we can't send that to the motherboard. So what we need to do is try to regulate it. And how we do that is through this sender diode here and this transistor here. And how this works is that, like I said, a sender diode has a can, can uh, conduct in reverse. And this is a 12 volt sender diode, so it will create a 12 volt, uh, it would conduct a 12 volts. In reverse, so we get a 12 volt difference over it here, which we can use to reference to this transistor over here. So that way, this transistor will follow this uh, center here. So we always have negative 12 out as long as the voltage here that can, uh, on this side is at least like negative uh, 13 because we got like a negative uh, one drop or so there. So we need to be somewhere around negative 13 to negative 20. And this is how this circuit basically works. So it's you put in 12 volt you get negative 12 out up to about 50 milliamps after that it has a hard time regulating because the what comes in on, the, on this side here starts to get too close to the negative 12 so this can't regulate. So now the plan is to actually build this on a like an actual PCB, so we actually have something we can use. So I suppose that's the next step to do. And like I said before, this is uh, probably not something you really want to like design and use for some more serious applications. This is really hobby level stuff. So. I'm not an expert on this, this is something I've pieced together. So take everything here with a grain of salt, it's not uh, a professional how-to by any means. It's more just a hobby project. So here I have laid out the components on a breadboard PCB here. So I just removed the wires here, but we can see the transistors here. Uh, and the 555 timer. These transistors were the ones used for amplifying the signal from the 555. And here are the diodes and the capacitors. And here is the sender diode and the voltage regulating transistor. And here is the wiring. So the idea is to hook up the AT connector and Mulex connectors over here. So we can get our five uh, um, negative 12 volt out here. Uh, here is our negative five, but we don't need that. And uh, this is our power good, but the board seems to generate its own, so it doesn't care about that. I was planning on using some of this extra space here for uh, a delay for power good, but uh, there's no point since it doesn't care about that anyway. So yeah, this is... Uh, the layout hopefully and this should hopefully work so let's uh, do some soldering and get this working so we're gonna start here and add uh, the components 
one by one here and then uh, once we added all the components we're gonna add the wires on the back side to wire it all up. So I started by adding the first transistor, it's a TIP 31C. It's fairly inexpensive, I think I paid about a euro for three of them. So the same goes for the TIP 32C and I so I happen to have those at home. They're quite common in like 486 motherboards and so on for voltage regulation to the CPU. They're rated at about 150C and I think they're either 1.5 amp or 3 amps, I'm not sure, can't recall. But they're pretty, pretty big too, so I don't have a heatsink gun, so with some airflow they're gonna stay cool enough. But if you want to run this passively I would probably add a heatsink. Also if you run it passively I would probably mount this DC inrush cap uh, somewhere further away. But since I'm gonna have a front fan, I'm not worried about the temperature here. So this is a 100 microfarad uh, 16 volt capacitor, and I figured out I had to add one because I got horrible ripple on the D 12 volt DC side otherwise, and we don't want that to go into the rest of the system. And uh, I used uh, different schematics on the internet to figure out the different parts to design my schematic, the one I showed before. I would recommend uh, lear learn about the electronics. Uh, he has a good channel. I'm gonna link to him uh, in the description below if you want to check it out. He has uh, some stuff on the 555 timer. And uh, yeah, so we're adding the 100 ohm resistor here. It goes it goes to the triple five timers output pin, and, and then goes to the base on the tip 31C and 32C. Also, I like to save uh, the legs on the components when I'm using a breadboard like this because you can use that to wire it, wire everything up later. So this is the tip to the 2C transistor going in here. I actually did some measurements on the 12, negative 12 volt rail on this design and compared it to the 5 volt and 12 volt rail on my 8x power supply user testing and I actually had lower ripple on the negative out from this one on the 80 connector than I had on the power supply so I'm pretty happy about the ripple actually. And here I'm just uh, using the leg of the resistor to connect it to the transistor here. So no, no point messing around with small uh, cables and wires if you don't have to. And here goes another resistor for the triple five timer. I can't recall if this is the 2.2k or the 10k one. But uh, they're both gonna go in next to each other there and then be hooked up to the triple five timer. I'm gonna post uh, the schematic uh, like uh, in, the, in the description if you want to build your own board. I can't uh, say how safe this board is or not since it's my own design and my first design in a, in forever basically. So it's an amateur project so take it for what it is. It's, uh, the schematic is made in KiCad. So that should, it works in Linux and should probably work in Windows too I think. But uh, there are pictures in the screenshots and so on both on the schematic and on the layout for the breadboard and the wiring so you can just look at that. There's also a mirrored version so you, when you solder your cables on the back when you twist the board like I do you can quite easily follow the wiring. Now I'm adding a dill socket here. Also actually 
quite cheap to get them with the fi triple five timers. I bought 25 timers and for like an extra euro or something, it might even been less. I got 25 of those steel sockets too. And the nice thing is if you, your ship dies or because you do something wrong or for whatever reason, it's a quick way of swapping it out instead of trying to disorder it. So I always use steel sockets whenever I repair or build something. So here I'm looking up the resistors to, to the dill socket so for the typified timer. And I do like this uh, Knipex uh, caliber. It's, uh, Really nice to get into tight places. Got the wires was well worth spending a couple of euros on that one. So that uh, resistor, I think, for the uh, pin number three on the five 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 timer. So that's the where we're gonna get our square wave coming out and then going over to the transistors to get the amplified before we send it off to the diodes and the caps and this is a filtering cap I also figured I needed from my measurements with the oscilloscope I read it's quite common to actually have one next to your ICs this is a 100 nanofarad I happen to have that laying around and seems to do a very good job it uh, reduced a very fine ripple almost nothing so it's also not the most uh, simple drawings of how to use this timer so here we're hooking up to ground and positive on the legs of the uh, timer and here is the cap that will uh, determine our frequency on the square wave it's a one nanofarad and uh, my measurement with the oscilloscope gave about uh, 50 53 kilohertz So yeah, if you, this is the uh, first of the four diodes. It's an N14007 diode. You can probably substitute that for something else. But that's what I had uh, in my economy pack. I bought a bunch of different ones, you know. Because it's nice to have like those uh, value packs. They're not always useful, but uh, they're pretty cheap, so. And I think they were rated for like 175 C. So they, they do get a bit warm, cramped in like that, but they well within specs, so it's not a problem. And once again, I like to keep the legs so I can use them to connect everything up later. So I don't need to add wires and try to do big solder bridges. And this is the first uh, of the four capacitors for the for the 12 volt to negative 12 volt inverter. Well, it actually the two stages of the inverter, so it's also a booster, so it uh, inverts and puts out about negative 20 volts that we will regulate later. So these caps are 47 microfarads. That was uh, seems to be the highest that make, made any difference my measurements so 100 microfarads didn't make much difference and these are 25 volts uh, because we have like I said about 20 volt difference on the second stage of the booster 
I would probably, if I ordered them specif specifically for this, go for 35 volt rating. But 25 should be fine. So yeah, if you want to learn more about uh, the 555 timer, I will post links to other YouTubers in the description you can check out. So this is the resistor for the center diode that will and the center diode will be used to regulate the, the, the transistor that will do the voltage regulation on the negative 12 volt later. So this is 330 ohms and now this resistor isn't strictly needed, it's just a load. It's a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor and it's only there to discharge the circuit. So it doesn't stay charged if you disconnect if you don't don't have anything connected and you power it off. So you can skip it if you have some permanent load that is enough to discharge it quickly enough. Uh, I want the mine to discharge in a second or two, so that's why I added, added it. It's about a five milliamp uh, parasitic load. So if you need those for something else, you can remove it basically. And this is a BC327 transistor rated about 800 milliamps. It runs fairly cool, it's hardly warm to the touch, so seems to do just fine here. It's also one of those economy packs I got when I bought a bunch of cheap electronics. It's kind of nice to have to test different transistors, I test a whole bunch and these ones work best for me on this design. Might be better ones out there obviously, but I don't have that net much to choose from right now. And this is a capacitor, it's another 47 uh, microfarad, uh, 25 volts. Uh, it's used by the voltage regulator here. And I did try like a hundred or two, but it made no difference. So I stuck with it because I had six of those laying around uh, left and I needed five, I think. Five or six, so I figured I used them. And this is the sender diode. It's a 12 volt sender diode, so that's our reference for the transistor to follow. So basically, we can take the negative about ter minus 13 to minus 20 volts and s get out negative 12, so the circuit is regulated. And this is the last capacitor, and I had already soldered something to that uh, pad, so I had to, well, uh, heat up the, the tin to get it in place. So it's another 47 microfarad, uh, 25 volt. And for the for the wiring we couldn't do but either due to the legs being too short or something being in the way so we would have created that short. I used ordinary flat cables and I just made some jumper wires on that. It's not the best cable but uh, the insulation is heat resistant enough for it to work. I was thinking about actually ordering a custom PCB on PCB way, but uh, yeah, sure, that wasn't expensive. It was like a five dollars for ten, but then there was shipping, toll, and so on. Would have added another like four to five in total until I got it to Sweden. So for a single board, this didn't seem worth it at the time. And I had this uh, experiment uh, experimental board that had it was the perfect size. So I decided to use it instead. This should be the last of the uh, 
small signal wires. I will add the la later the ground and uh, 12 volt and uh, so on when we get some cables hooked up to the board. So we know where those go. So that's pretty much it for the board. I put it together and I had some issues at first, but uh, there was nothing wrong with the actual board or my design. It was uh, I forgot the ground cable here to the power supply, so that's uh, stupid. But anyways, uh, that's, that's all that. Then I had some problem with my fan that I used as a like a really heavy load, well, heavy. But it draws about uh, 18 milliamp. And we have uh, minus 11.55 volts. And we're drawing right now 0.43 milli, 430 milliamps for the power supply at 12 volts. So we have, from my estimate, about a 23% efficiency. So we can measure some things here. Right now, these transistors are at about uh, 105C. And you might ask why design it with a cap in the middle, you're gonna cook it. But uh, for two reasons for space saving, but we won't be running at 80 milliamps, we'll be running at 28, and we will have a big fan here, an 80 millimeter fan in the front, cooling this off. But the reason I wanted to show this is uh, when it's hotter, the, probably due to the center diode, how it works, and other components, it actually get higher voltage out and more current drop. Which obviously means more uh, heat is generated by the board. So we can actually take this fan that works as a load and set it to cool off the board. And uh, when the board is cooled off uh, with a fan like this, and this fan isn't as powerful as the one going in later in the actual system, but at this load here at about 80 milliamps, where we're running it like low 40s to high 40s on all the components with some airflow over them, so that, that's, that helps a lot. But uh, this would be perfectly fine passively with the intended 30 to 50 milliamp uh, actual load. So let's see here with the temperature. Where well, it's 53 now, so it's going to be dropping a little bit more here. Yeah. But that's the 50 on the other transistor. Those are the hottest parts. And we have 41 on the capacitor in the middle there. And as you can see, the voltage has dropped now to minus 11.3, and the milliamps are down to 76. So as the temperature goes down, the output goes down a bit. And we're pulling out 270 milliamps on the lab power supply. And here on the monitor we can see on my oscilloscope that I hooked up here, um, with these two here. I hooked it up to uh, the negative side, so you can see the ripple on the output. And I hooked it up to the 555 timer, so you can see the uh, square wave. So if you look at the bottom channel, the channel 2, the blue one, at the very bottom we have our negative 12 volts, and uh, we can see some small amount of ripple. But that's not too bad, I think, yeah, for my first uh, voltage regulator and uh, converter. On the top, yellow, you can see the uh, square wave of the 555 uh, timer. And I think it looks pretty good, it's pretty square. There's some small spikes here and there, but there's nothing bad. And if we change here again, we can check the actual frequency. And I said I, it should run somewhere around uh, 10 to 20 kilohertz because one of the the, the values are based the uh, capacitor and resistor of that uh, particular schematic said like 17 kilohertz. But according to my oscilloscope here, if we measure one high and low, which is a full cycle, so we get one hertz, it says 52.74 kilohertz. So it seems like it's running in the 50 kilohertz range, uh, switching frequency. So a bit higher, but that should, uh, I think, increase uh, efficiency if nothing else, so it's probably better. So yeah, what's left to do now is actually to hook up the Molex cables and the AT connector and also uh, the uh, 
add some fasteners to the support bracket at the rear so you can mount it to that. So that would be my next thing to do on the list. So I started hooking up the AT connector here. I forgot to start the camera initially, so but uh, I'm gonna do two of uh, two of these AT connectors and then a uh, couple of uh, Molex connectors. And the reason why I didn't go with some uh, surface mounted ones was because the, the cables from the power supply won't reach anyway. So then I need some extension male to female Molex connects in a way and that seems unnecessary. I don't want extra connectors so I just do it this way instead add some where I got some extra length of cable from the actual card. Seems to be the easiest way to go. And I do have enough adapters so So the connectors are in place, so now we have to wire this part up to the power supply here, to the connectors, the cables here on the back side. So that should be it for the wiring, so we should be able to test it now, see if we have all the outputs on the AT connector. So I hooked up the voltage converter uh, to a couple of uh, Molexes here from my power supply and I still have the ATX to AT adapter connected because I uh, can turn the power supply on with that. But like I said we hooked up the two Molex connectors instead, so I'm gonna Turn it on. Here. So, on now. We have some ground for multimeter, so we can probe over here. We can start checking the 5 volt line. And it's there. And we have no negative 5, we can skip, there's nothing else on that one. Then we got the minus 12. And there we have that. And then we can check the plus 12. And that we have, and then we have another 5. And then we have power good, which is not connected at all. And the uh, motherboard seems to generate its own power good because that sends out a signal too, it's like the power supply. And we can probably check on this power supply here for power good, it should be this one here. And it should be like 5, yeah. The thing is, the motherboard does the same thing. So I think it generates its own power good and once it's happy with uh, like the 5 volts and so on. So this, so I didn't make any like delay because I was thinking of making like a delay circuit because it's like a hundred millisecond delay usually before the power supply. 
sends the power good, but uh, there's no point when the motherboard doesn't care. So before I'm gonna test it, I'm gonna mount it in the, bra in the bracket here and post the card in place in the computer. And there are plenty of room in between here. I use motherboard standoff, so it's the same. So it shouldn't be an issue with the clearance and stuff like that. So this, uh, when it sits in the system, this is this is the front of the case, and the car is here. So I get the power here because the cables comes from this way from the power supply. So should work quite well I think. So I'm gonna mount this piece to the card. Now one important thing when doing that this side is ground here. The copper here. Uh, and this side is 3.3 volt. I'm not sure if there is any voltage when you're using AT there. It should generate in the ohm but uh, it might still be here. But the thing is if you just put screws through here the screws will scratch through the surface and get to the copper so you will if you have a metal bracket like this you will have short this obviously wasn't made to have one and i have cards that were made to have one but those were in plastic and broke off but you have to make sure either there are no copper that, uh, that has like a voltage over it so you can create a short or you have to insulate them so to insulate them i create i well created i let's see here i have a screw here so we can see. Have this screw here, and uh, I use those uh, insulation shims you get with some cases, and then I put some uh, shrink wrap. So this will insulate inside the hole and on both sides. Uh, if I use uh, another shim, so it ends up like that, and that will insulate. So I have two of those. Rather be too safe than sorry. So you should be able to run off the Lexus now and uh, not use the AT connectors. So I'm gonna plug in the adapter here to the board. And now I'm gonna hook up the power supply to the Molex connectors and then we're gonna boot into BIOS and check there because we can see the negative 12 volt there. So everything is hooked up. I got the multimeter here connected to the negative 12 volt so we can check that. Here are the Molexes connected to the power supply. So yeah, the only thing left to do is to power it up.
and here we can see the voltages and we have minus 11.70 according to the BIOS our multimeter is saying see here uh, 12.02 negative so yeah if you don't have any 12 volt line connected I got minus, minus 62.5 so that seems to be working I also have connected a serial mouse so you can boot into Windows and try that so here we are in Windows Let's give it a moment So, try this out. I got one of those, uh, well, it wasn't sheep, I got one of those uh, mouses on every case for like 35 euros, and they were really crappy. Can't recommend those. But uh, as you see, the mouse is working on the serial port, and it does not work without the uh, negative. Well, and the Porsche minus 11.94 here in motherboard monitor. And the multimeter says negative 12.13. So, yeah. Let's see here. The nice menu mouse. Let's say come to port here. So, suppose that this is for this time. Uh, uh, more parts coming for this motherboard, this power leak, uh, power leak motherboard, but uh, apparently it got damaged in shipping, so I don't know what, what will show up, if anything. So until then I have to wait, but I think uh, there will be another video when I install this and the actual system is going to, with some other parts. So until then I... Well, thank you for watching and uh, have a nice day.